sky is the limit for him. Sorry, can you repeat that again? That's a beautiful fast break. You know, that's the main thing. Stars like LeBron James shine. He finished with 22.7 boards and 10 assists in the Lakers' 138-115 win over the Mavs. But even the King can have an off moment. LeBron airballed the free throw in the third quarter and gave this interesting explanation for it after the game. I told you the other night when I drink, the wine goes from straight down to the left side of my body. Tonight, I shot the free throw with my right hand, so it uh, did not have it had a bad side effects. So I'm gonna see if I can drink some wine. If I can shoot it down to the right side of my body, maybe to help my free throw. Uh, I will uh, give me a little bit more strength to where it doesn't uh, hit absolutely nothing. So we we'll see, see right. what happens. Maybe I need to drink upside down tonight. Maybe vampire style. We we'll see. Listen, the man was doing something <laughs> right. I mean, LeBron now has 10 wins on Christmas, which is tied for the most in NBA history. And after dropping 22 against the Mavericks, he passed Oscar Robertson for the second most points on Christmas Day in NBA history. LeBron now only trails Lakers legend Kobe Bryant. NBA Full Court Press now starting with the Lakers. Of the four big off-season acquisitions for the Lakers, two of them, Montrezl Harrell and Dennis Schroeder, already look right at home while two of them, Marcus Saul and Wesley Matthews, are still finding their footing. Of Harrell and Schroeder, who combined for 40 points on 17 for 24 shooting on Christmas, LeBron James said they, quote, add to our firepower. Gasol and Matthews, meanwhile, combined for just four points after combining for zero points on opening night. Anthony Davis said the Lakers are, quote, asking a lot of Gasol and Matthews on defense, so their offense will come. The next test for the 101 Lakers is a back-to-back -back Sunday and Monday against the Wolves and Blazers. Added AD about integrating all those new pieces, quote, it's a good problem to have. It was a scary moment for the Los Angeles Clippers when Kawhi Leonard went down after colliding with Serge Ibaka late in the game. There was a lot of blood on the court as Kawhi was holding his mouth. But eventually, after medical staff came on to the floor and Serge stayed with him the entire time, Kawhi was able to stand up and walk off of the court under his own power. I'm told that he got eight stitches to treat a what the team is calling a mouth laceration. And Ty Lu said after the game that he believes Kawhi Leonard Leonard is, quote, going to be fine. It looked in the third period like Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving decided the game should be decided in this exact moment. They outscored the Celtics, just the two of them, 25 to 23. And it was triggered in any number of beautiful offensive ways. Kevin Durant went on fire, went to work. It didn't matter if it was transition, at the cup, fade away, three-pointer, he had it all. Kyrie Irving's ability against Marcus Smart to hit tough threes despite good defense. Uh, they are a handle, they put defenses in a bind, and let's not forget the great play of the support pieces. Karis Levert had a stretch early where he was dominant. Jared Allen, I thought, was tremendous at the rim on both ends of the floor. This is a talented, deep Brooklyn team driven by two brilliant stars. Thank you, Doris. So far this season, anytime KD has been on the court, Kyrie has been right next to him. They've played 58 minutes together this season, outscoring their opponents by 57 points. They're the fifth duo to each score 50 points across their first two games as teammates. He has opened their presents. They got the PS5 and a whole lot of toys. It was awesome, and I got a few gifts, but it's all good, as long as the kids was happy. <laughs> Absolutely, and we're counting down to the start of the Mavs versus the Lakers. Both teams dropped their season openers. Now, Perk, were you encouraged or discouraged by those results? Um, I was encouraged. Look, the, the only, as far as the Lakers, the only thing they were worried about was getting their rings. I'm not worried about the Lakers at all. I feel like they're the best team in the Western Conference. The Mavs, on the other hand, I feel like, you know, they're finding their groove. You know, guys are getting implemented into Rick Carlisle's system. Guys like, you know, uh, Josh Richardson, Brunson, who's just coming back, who's been off. And, you know, Luka is working his way back up. I feel like he could get in better shape because they're going to rely on him a lot. 
how coming off an of injury. So the Mavs will be just fine. I think the Lakers will be fine also. Both of those teams are, are going to do well in the Western Conference. All right. Well, one of the things the Lakers want to do is win another championship. They did a lot of things in the offseason to try to make that happen again this season. I mean, I'm going to ask you this question. What do you think about the Lakers offseason moves? I thought they had the best offseason of any team in the league. Uh, no disrespect to, you know, the mm. things that Milwaukee did and some of the other teams. But when you talk about a championship team getting better in the offseason, that almost never happens. Perk, you know how it is. You're just trying to keep everything together, keep the band back together. The Lakers went out there and they upgraded their supporting cast. And it starts with Marc Gasol. I think he's going to open up a lot of things for them on both ends of the floor, offensively as a passer and as a low post threat, something that they haven't had. And then defensively as another back line of defense so that AD doesn't have to be a five for them. And then you talk about Wes Matthews and Dennis Schroeder and Montrez Harrell, the Lakers all season. I mean, again, it is so rare for a championship team to add four bona fide upgrades in their supporting cast. Now, we're only one game into the season, and Luka is already the current favorite for MVP. Now, Perk, what are you expecting from Luka for year three? Well, I expect him to go out there and, and, you know, average 30, get his nine assists and his nine rebounds, but Luka has to up his three-point percentage. I think he has to get in better shape. He has the whack body. and If you don't know what the whack yeah. body is, that's a guy like myself who try to work yeah. his tail off to get a six-pack but could never get over the hump, right? Luka would never probably get chiseled up, but he still could work on his body because he's going to have to he's going to have to carry this team especially while do that is to be in the best shape possible so i'm looking at luke i expect great things from him i don't have him picked as my mvp i have anthony davis as that but mm. he's going to do great and still carry the mavs well, one thing that would certainly help Luca is if the Mavs played really well, especially in the Western Conference. Obviously, KP is out right now, but I mean, I'll ask you this question. What else do the Mavs need in order to compete? Well, I think they've got a couple of guys who are coming back after long layoffs. You got Dwight Powell, who uh, Perk mentioned. He was such a big part of their offense last year before he got hurt. He's coming back now, but obviously he's rusty. And then Willie Cauley-Stein, who sat out of the bubble, I believe, for personal reasons. He's another guy who gives them a vertical spacer. Just these guys just need to get reps under their belt because you think about it for, for Willie Call Stein, he hasn't played since March. For Powell, it's been even longer than that since he got hurt. And then obviously, Josh Richardson was a big offseason acquisition for them. He's not quite the shooter that Seth Curry was, but he could put the ball on the floor a little bit more. And then he's obviously a huge upgrade on the defensive end. So just trying to get these guys back in the swing of things and and fitting in i think is going to be huge as a gap uh until porzingis comes back uh next month or so speaking of things getting back in the swing of things we got a we are now joined by NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski. No, Wojnarowski, geez, Louise, I knew I was gonna. Be, I, know, I haven't said your name fully yeah, sure. yet, so that's the first okay. time I feel like this is this is a good thing to do on Christmas Day. But welcome in, Woj. Thanks for joining us, and we might as well start this thing off just at, at the thick of the drama with Harden and the Rockets. So as it pertains to their game tomorrow against the Blazers, where do the Rockets stand with Harden? Well, James Harden is actually uh, scheduled to play in that game. The uh, Rockets are flying to Portland tonight. They'll do so with uh, perhaps only really eight players they can play in the game against the Blazers tomorrow. They do have an injured player who's on the roster, um, but Chris Clemens, who can't play. But a combination of uh, contact tracing, positive coronavirus tests uh, in Houston, you know, is limiting uh, their roster. Obviously, they couldn't play against Oklahoma City the other night, but uh, Harden is expected to make uh, his season debut along with the Rockets debut against the Blazers and then they play again uh, Monday night in Denver. Now Woj, James Harden has keeps adding more and more teams to where he would like to be traded, but they still have him for two seasons. How long do you think the standoff could continue? I, I think it has a chance to continue into the foreseeable future that mm -hmm. you know the Rockets know that to, to make a James Harden trade, uh, you know, they've got to get maximum value back in the trade market. They don't need to rush this process. I mean, obviously they do have them under contract for two more years. They, they don't want this cloud to hang over them. It is a difficult situation in Houston right now for them to function. 
Uh, but I, I think as an organization, you know, they know that they can't do a bad deal. And right now the deals that they see out there uh, in the marketplace feel like they're not good enough. And I think they hope that those, those offers will improve. Listen, as teams get into the season and, and, and teams maybe, un, you know, maybe they've overestimated the group they had, maybe they, see, maybe they start to feel you know, a little pressure to really dramatically improve their team, you know, offers improve in that way. But of course, there's other teams, like, like let's say a Brooklyn, who gets off to a great start, who likes the chemistry, likes the group they have, and maybe they become uh, le maybe a little more hesitant to, to get seriously or remain seriously in talks. But I think the Rockets know that uh, they still have time on their side, but it is, it's not a healthy environment right now in Houston. And, and they know the sooner they make a trade, the better. Uh, they, just, they just know they have to make the right one. And we'll keep an eye on that for sure. Now, Adam Silver mentioned earlier this week there's possibility of the NBA expanding. Do you have any thoughts or what that would look like for the NBA's future? Well, I, I think it's still uh, not necessarily in the foreseeable future. I think it's still years away. And listen, for owners and for uh, the league, it is a big financial. There's a big financial benefit uh, for a team to pay uh, to come in to the league. That could be as much as four or five billion dollars and that's shared among uh, you know that entrance fee is shared among the other owners and especially with the revenue that's been lost during the pandemic um, and and playing a season now without fans for the most part around the league you know th that economic value certainly uh, is impactful and, and you know Seattle is a market that looms out there is uh, you know you know very formidable uh, NBA city. It's got great tradition, history, and, and now has an arena uh, situation in place that would allow them to play. And so certainly, I think you'll hear more talk and, and more enthusiasm from, from certainly the Seattle uh, side and from Seattle.